heads. We only ever get given one, and it's meant to last a lifetime. Uh, they vary wildly in size, shape, and contents. And I have it on good authority that if mine wasn't screwed on, I'd lose it. And if you value your precious one and only noggin, and you own an Oculus Quest 2, you've probably been looking into alternatives to the soft head strap. So today, we're taking a look at the Kiwi Elite strap, the Bobo VR M2, and why I can't tell you which is the best. Now, as to why I can't tell you which of the two head straps is the best, is a matter of ergonomic design. And that's the balance between being able to fit varying sizes of heads and weird shapes and all the lumpy bumpy bits that we have, and cost. How do you make that many adjustments on a head strap? And the easiest example of ergonomic design is this right here. This is an internal door built to the Australian building standards for internal doors. It is 204 centimeters tall, 82 centimeters wide, and the door handle's about 102 centimeters off the deck. That means that uh, if you look at the distribution curve for human height, you, you've got generally two belt curves, one for women, one for men. Uh, the male median height will be around 176 centimeters, I think. And that tapers off wildly as you get towards the extremes. So the extreme like short and the extreme tall uh, represent a very, very small percentage of the human population. And when you're making a door, you don't want to make a door that's massive that barely anyone will have to use because that's wasted cost. If you've got several of these doors in your house, being able to fit Shaquille O'Neal through all of them when you don't need that is pretty much money down the drain and he can afford his own extra big doors. So what does this mean for headsets? I mean, the human head is full of lumps and bumps. There's, no one has the same head shape. Greebles. I mean, if you've ever seen a hat maker's tool, you, you'll see the crazy like shape covered in dials and things. There's so much to go on a human head. So let's take a look at these two head straps and just try and keep all this in mind. Your mileage may vary in so many different directions. This is the stock Oculus Quest 2 strap. Uh, it's a soft strap design. I understand why they went for it. They didn't want this giant rigid sort of uh, helmet style thing with all these wires and speakers and things hanging off of it. They wanted to make a more approachable headset. And, and that comes from the, the white aesthetic that they went with in the first place. It, it, it's sort of got like that uh, sweat pant appeal. It's not offensive, it's super approachable. And you know, it's, it's very compact and, and much easier to store than like a big uh, Vive headset or you know, or an Index or something with its massive uh, rigid structure. But of course the problem with this guy is because it's a soft strap, it requires a, a quite a strong clamping force to, to keep it secure and stable on your head. Uh, this is achieved by pulling these two toggles here at the back and you try and get as much weight as you can through the top strap, but you're gonna get face pressure and the best you can do is use these little arms here, tilting them up and down to sort of balance that pressure between your cheeks and uh, your brow ridge. Of course, I have a quite the ample brow ridge, uh, so I can hang anything I want off of it, headsets, paintings, what have you. Uh, so I wore this for a year without any problem at all. And, um, but I wanted to go on to something uh, a bit better because I wanted to have a battery hanging off the back of this thing to balance it out. And on the soft strap, it's just a lot of faffing around. It's floppy and the wires harder to control. So first up, this is the Bobo head strap. And it's a halo style head strap. So it sort of sits on your head like, like a hard hat. If you ever worn one of those, you look inside, they've got like this webbing and it just sits on your head like, like, like wearing a hat basically. Uh, that pressure is distributed around there, so there's no pressure on your face. And what you can actually do with these Halo style head straps is, because they don't put any pressure on your face, you don't technically need the interface to wear them at all. So I can take this guy here without the interface in there, and I can pop him on my head like this. And it just sort of floats in front of your eyes. And if you play in a completely pitch black room, which you can do using IR illumination, um, I'm gonna have a video on that up here. Um, yeah, it's a really eerie, amazing feeling where 
you can't feel anything on your face, so you're, the illusion of, of the images is maintained. You, you don't think that it's coming out of a headset because you can't feel the headset coming you know, on your face. It's kind of like how the uh, DAS um, Deluxe Audio strap for the Vive and the Index has those floating speakers instead of headphones. You don't feel it, so it, it sounds like the world is making the audio, you know? It's not coming from a pair of headphones. Um, this one is really like super adjustable. You, you can like adjust the pitch and the angle and the and the thing like this. You got your knob on the back. There's just a whole bunch of different things you can adjust here. So it can it can be a little bit fiddly to set up, but once you've got it right and you don't bump it around too much, it, it is pretty quick to get set up and, and going again. So because you've got like this main pivot here is the softest and everything else is stiffer, putting it on is pretty much just like bopping that and then pulling the back down like this. Um, one thing I found with this which sort of needed correcting, and this has been addressed on the newer models like the battery one, and I think there's a new version of the base model like this, is because this strap has got this cutout here, um, it actually can't hook on to the occipital uh, protuberance on the back of your head. So where your head, your skull goes around the corner here is really handy for hanging uh, the headset from so I've got quite a quite a pronounced one and if you can get the headset strap below that The headset sort of locks onto your head um, with this Unfortunately, you can't if you pull it down all the way like that it, 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 it doesn't really quite get there and you're wearing the headset very low It's down to crush the fo your forehead a little bit and this means that it does slowly slip up with the weight of that headset on the front um, one solution I found was I add a 10k uh, anchor power bank onto the back. Uh, that gives me like uh, six hours of total playtime out of the thing and it perfectly balances it. It's just a little 10k, but because of that leverage from the front of your face, uh, that, that actually equals out and it's just really nicely balanced. So you can see why Bobo themselves ended up doing the power head strap. That's probably the one to go for. That's a super nice solution. We've got your removable PU, uh, your fake leather interface. It's all Velcroed in. You've got these two little horn guys on the top. And these are just to sort of vertically locate the front of the strap on your head. You're not meant to be taking any pressure through that. They are quite padded and they are quite bendy as well. So you shouldn't be taking too much weight through there. But I have seen some people reporting that it did hurt their head, but they must have like much less hair than I do or something. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the Bobo VR head strap. It's um, pretty cool, very adjustable, takes a little while to lock it in, and it really does benefit from having that battery on the back. And this is the Kiwi strap. As you can see, it's a much simpler design than the Bobo. It is not a Halo style strap. It's much more like the original strap in that it's a clamp style. So it sort of just brings your face towards the back of your head. But unlike the original soft strap, because this is rigid, it can take a lot more of the pressure through the top of the strap here. So it requires a lot less face pressure than, than a stock strap. It's, not nearly as, uh, as crushing, and, and it's sort of more rigidly set, so it's much easier to hit the sweet spot. In fact, <clears throat> because of these extra hinges here, and they do have like a little bit of like a cam lock action to them like this, so you can see it sort of snaps into place, it actually is super, super fast to take on and off. So you've got your adjustment knob on the back to set the pressure that you want to fit your head, and then you never have to touch that again. You just pop it up like this, Pop it on your face and pull the back down. And then it's locked on, that's it. it. It's so, so fast. Once you've got it set to your head, that's it, you're done. Easy peasy, it, like, it's so, so very, very fast. It's, it makes VR more convenient. And that's the thing that the Quest did on its own. It made VR more convenient, sort of. It's got like that anywhere, anytime. You just whack it on and you're comfortable. There's no fiddling around. It's not gonna go out of whack. You're not like pulling the little toggles or anything. And this thing has been pretty bulletproof for me. I play a lot of first person shooter games, as you can probably tell from my channel history. And this is the choice that I go to for FPS. Because it does clamp to your face, unlike the Bobo, it's very, very stable in fast head motions. So it doesn't ever feel like it bashes, it doesn't ever touch your nose. Uh, it just stays locked onto your face and it doesn't need that much sort of crushing face pressure as a stock strap. And because it has a very, very deep back on it, it, go, it actually goes down behind that, like, that little knob at the back of your head. So it does lock onto your head for looking down or up or any way. It never 
comes off like a hat could. It's, it's locked onto your head like a helmet is. And that makes it like very, very good. If you play a lot of first person shooters, this is the guy I'd go for. And again, this strap also benefits from having the, uh, that 10K power bank hung off of it because you know we're still trying to get that same sense of balance. And on this, I just hang it off of the bottom here like this with a couple of Velcro cable ties. That hangs on there. And it, again, it's perfectly balanced and it's nice and compact. It doesn't actually stick out past the uh, back of the headset at all. It just sort of sits tucked underneath there and you never notice that it, it, it's there. You just get that six hour of game time, perfect balance and everything is sweet. You got that nice fat squishy sort of PU leather thing. You've got the same deal of like the, uh, the back padding can be removed. It's just Velcroed in. Um, yeah, it's a really, really nice strap. Um, but again, I can't tell you which one is the best one to go with because everyone's head is different. Um, my head is nothing like Gary's here. Um, your head is nothing like my head. Um, but for me, I really don't want to choose between them, actually. I am happy with both of these headsets for different things. Again, if I want to play that, do my sim racing at night, and I don't want any pressure on my face. If I want to do endurance racing, I can actually have the headset floating in front of my face, um, which is amazing. Um, but again, if I want to play first person shooters like contractors and things where I'm whipping around, I'm going to want something super secure and I'm going to go for this guy every time. Um, because both of the headsets have these rigid plastic sides to them, it actually channels the sound from the speakers a little bit better as well. Uh, it, it makes the sound a little bit fuller. Like, if, if, try this out at home if you've got a, if you've got a Quest. Uh, put your, just cup your hands over your ears like this when you're playing the audio through the, uh, the speakers and you'll notice this much richer sound. A lot of it is esca it's just escaping into the atmosphere before it gets to your ears. And these, these help to channel that sound. It sort of reflects it along the head strap a little bit and more of it goes into your ears. So you can have your volume a little bit lower or you can hear footsteps a little bit easier, which is super, super useful. You can also get these earmuff things that I saw or like when the Quest 2 first came out. Um, these big plastic earmuff things, they look ridiculous, but I'm guessing, I haven't tried them myself, but I'm guessing that they actually work really, really well. Because you can just try it out yourself at home with your hands, but imagine if your hands were like rigid plastic that reflected sound much better. Sounds like a pretty good deal. Uh, but anyway, back to the straps. Uh, I can't tell you which one is which one to go with. Pick one that suits your needs, but these two are both fantastic. As you can see, the color match of the, uh, of the material is spot on. I was, I was fearing that the texture would be different, being third party straps, but both Bobo and Kiwi have nailed the, uh, the color. Um, the Bobo's got these nice little uh, machine, well, looks like machined metal uh, aluminum parts in there, so that looks really, really slick as well. Um, Kiwi's built a little bit tougher. Bobo's a bit more adjustable. Pick one that suits your needs and I'll see you in the next one.